Hi, this is Darius. Um, I am doing my comparison for The Circle by Dave Eggers, the comparison between the book and the movie for social media from my class. Um, first to start out, um, just to get this stuff out of the way, one of the biggest things for me was personally I liked the movie as kind of like a movie concept of the book. Um, it was kind of like a hypothetical version of what the book could have gone down. Um, I, I like it separately, but when in comparison with the book, it does lag in a couple places and doesn't bring that emotional impact as much. Um... So yeah, that's that's kind of like my standing on how I like the movie. I like it as its own thing and kind of like branching out from what the book was. So yeah. Um so to get started breaking it down, um a lot of key things in the beginning of the book were not there. Such as the messages with the stones, and um, we didn't get directly into the circle. We actually kind of played around it for a little bit. Um, so immediately had, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, May going to kayak, which was interesting because you don't really figure out that she likes kayaking until a little bit further in the book. Um, it shows her old job, which I like personally. Because it really does show how drab it is compared to her and what she really wants. So that's a good visual point. Um, I don't know if they... I, I doubt they ever talked about... Well, actually had her in her job in the book. I know they talked about it. But um, I like that they just added that point. Um, so... Her, May and Mercer are no longer exes, which brings a big dynamic to, um, to the whole movie. Because one of the big things was May was never open-minded to what Mercer had to say because they were exes. So not making them exes is a really big turn. Um... But even, even though they had Mercer in the very beginning, he didn't really talk a lot about um, his point of view. So you kind of have to wait until later in the movie to even figure out his point of view of where he is with social media. Which is um, a little interesting to think about. Um, then we have the dinner scene. Oh, oh, yeah, before I keep going, I also have where Mercer is fixing her car, which shows that Mercer is hands-on, more hands-on than a lot of other people. So that's a, I thought that was a good point to point out. Um, but yeah, I have the dinner scene. Um, then they, they bring up the insurance, which I'm glad they did. Um... Because that was actually, I think that was actually one of the key points for me in the book before she started going through the whole becoming a circular thing was become, was getting the insurance for her father. So I'm glad that was actually brought up. Um, And also another thing in the book is May just, to me, seems like she has more emotion. Um, she actually looked very disappointed that she couldn't help her father up. So, just another small thing like that, um, that I like, but does diverge from the book. Um, so then after the scene, we go into the circle, and it kind of just throws us in instead of, um, kind of laying us in, like, the book. The movie, I guess because of probably time, kind of just throws us in. Um, first thought of Annie, they definitely got like the snobbish, fast-paced um, 
attitude of her. So I definitely like that. Um, we get to see May's interview. That was interesting that they put that in. And a lot of the questions, um, Velcro, that was weird. Uh, but it also does show you, if you listen into the questions, how much information the circle wants and how, how much they get into your privacy. It does show that in the interview. Um, kind of, one of my favorite parts in the book, if I were to have a favorite part, was May getting upset about, um, her desk looking like her old job. So not seeing that part was kind of, kind of, uh, disappointing. Um, I also put a note here that Annie is not blonde, so... Just the character thing. Um, the tour that they did, it probably because of movie constraints, it doesn't flush out the whole area as much and doesn't give you as much information. Um, so after that, they get into the elevator. I'm I'm glad they showed the elevator thing and with the pictures. Um, because it was kind of hard for me to visualize that, how it would look exactly. So the fact that they did that was pretty cool. Um, Dan, they did Dan good. Um, he was patient. He was willing to help. Um, also Jared, they did Jared's character pretty good as well. Um, I feel like he didn't, he did more no, 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 he did less, actually. Um, because he only helped her with one, uh, customer experience. He only helped her one time, and then kind of left, let her go. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one thing I saw. Also, he never fixed that 99. Um, he didn't fix it. It was 100. He actually gives her a, a 100. Well, she gets a hundred in the book. So that was just a small thing. Um, one thing that was, that you see in the movie is that May is actually struggling to get good at the customer service system, which I like because in the book, she automatically gets it. She just, after one after another, it's like 95, 96, 100, 98. And in the movie, she's actually struggling at first because she's just thrown into this new position. So I actually like that as a movie standpoint. But in keeping with the book, um, May is very tech savvy. So it does take away from that, having her struggle. Um, so next scene... Let's talk about, we have Annie, she's back, and she actually is tired very early um, in the book. I put, she she doesn't really show any fatigue until about halfway through the book. When we're at this um, event with Bailey. So, um, like I said, it's probably time constraints with the movie. Um... Then we get to see Bailey. Bailey, he's, he's really shown the way you would think he is in the book. Um, so, I don't, I don't know if it was the coffee. It was, I think it was the coffee mug for me. It just was like, he is really that uncle, that lovable uncle character in the book. And it shows in the movie. So, that's that's a good point for them. Um, also, just the comments they were throwing at him and how he just bounced back and forth with the audience. It really shows his uh, how friendly and how caring he is to the circlers. Um, one thing I did put about that whole thing 
was the cameras. They really uh, showed up the cameras early, the sea change cameras. Um, I just put like little points, like the fact that they <laughs> they emphasize how small they were. I, I think I glazed over it in the book how small they were. But on um, that one scene where it was like, we have 144 cameras in this one place alone. And the fact that you couldn't even, you barely could see any of them. It was really, really scary. Um, another fact that I had is how, how scary Bailey's wordplay is. Because he says they're using it mainly for human activists and combating terrorism. Um, to show how good the cameras are. And Bailey in the book, he's really good with his words. I think that's one of his strongest points is how good he is talking to people and how good he's con he is convincing people. So I think that was a good um, show. Because if you read the book, you know these cameras aren't necessarily for that. They are just to be in everybody's business. Um, one thing I want to know is how focused May was during this whole entire scene. She, she was dead focused on everything Bailey was saying. Um, and just how, how she didn't really convey much emotion to me, which kind of scared me, because I was thinking, like, oh, no, she's, she's about to get obsessed with everything, like, in the book. So, um, yeah, uh, really scared me, I don't know, for a moment. Um, also, we get to the party scene. Um, the party's really a party. <laughs> They have live bands and everything there. So it shows just how extravagant everything is at the circle. Um, so Annie, she finally does the tour in the library. And it kind of throws me off because I remember it happening during the tour early in the book. So the fact that they do it during the move, the um, in the movie during the whole party, it kind of threw me off for a moment. Um, then they go into the library, they have the nice knocker joke, nice touch, I, I, I caught it, so, um, one thing I will say is during the non, uh, the verbal disclosed, um, agreement, closure agreement, that thing. Um, it really shows their, May and Annie's relationship. This the sassiness during that whole thing. Because, like, Annie's like, I know you're going to agree to this, but I still need to do this. And May's like, you know I'm not going to tell anybody, but I'll still agree to it. So it really does show their relationship. Um, one thing, I, I don't think this was in the book, but May touching things. And just laying on the couch and just being twice as courageous to do things. Um, yeah, it, it it was, I, I don't think it's in the book, but I know seeing it in the movie, it's, it's like, oh, she's, she's pretty brave. Um, so Annie has to leave. She has work. Which, I'm glad it shows how busy Annie actually is. But I'm kind of disappointed that it didn't show Annie through the whole party. Um, but I guess we didn't need Annie anymore because we find out Francis is not in the movie. Um, which I'm actually glad because a lot of the scenes with Francis I feel like weren't necessary. And I also feel like Francis was... I, he was a character that I just couldn't get along with. Even after his backstory and everything, I just couldn't. I just couldn't get behind him as a character and see his character scenes as um, a benefit towards the overall plot. So knowing that he isn't in the a movie is really good to me. Um. So, in place of. Francis, we actually get a scene with um, Jared, and he's like, oh, I gotta 
fight fires. And I was like, what? What do you mean? And then, um, actually meet, uh, Raiden, Raiden, however you say it, aka Ty Early, um, which is crazy that they, they threw it in that early, um, with him with the alcohol. I'm glad they kept the alcohol scene, though. Um, it was a good touch. Um, so, also I put in, like, a little shoehorn here, like, they keep using the word guppy. I can't remember if they use the word guppy in the book, but I know they use it several times in the movie. Um, especially because they didn't go to the new, um, the newbies meeting. She never went because she was out of town, and they show that she does go in the movie, so. Um, I like the the scene, the barbecue scene, cookout scene, whatever it is. I like how they show the difference between May and her parents. They're more laid back, even I, I put in here, I wouldn't necessarily say they're country parents, but they're more laid back when it comes to technology, and then you have the techie daughter. So I like how they have that um, dynamic. And you also have the parents wanting her to, wanting May to get together with Mercer. Um, just shows how much they like Mercer. So that can be somewhat of a comparison to the book, that the parents like Mercer. Um, uh, so... When they go into the house, when May follows Mercer into the house, or I think his other way around, I'm not entirely sure. One of them goes in the house and the other one goes after. But they have the antisocial talk. Antisocial media. And I really feel like they downgraded it a lot. Because Mercer didn't get to say as much. And to me, it didn't feel as impactful. We do get the, um, Mercer talking about the senator, um, but even that wasn't, in that moment, it wasn't as impactful. So I think because Mercer didn't get that time to fully flesh out himself as a foil to me, um, that speech is not as impactful. Um, but the ending does show that May and Mercer are, are still on good terms. So that's, all of that is definitely opposite of the book. Um, so, the, <laughs> May's dad has his accident at this cookout instead of a private dinner. And you can see on his face... He's like, oh shit, this happened in front of my daughter. Uh, I don't really like this. Um, so I'm glad they kept it. Um, it, it just, I don't know. I guess in the environment, it felt weirder for that to happen. So yeah. Um, so we have... May being torn up about it. She goes kayaking. I think the movie shows a better job of me actually having emotions, but then again, that takes away from the book where May, I feel like, transforms into this almost like a robot. So it's battling. Um, so uh, we have May going back and. They show the amount of cameras that are in the workplace. Um, so, like, foreboding, you know, sea change, going transparent, all that. They finally show the senator. Everybody's watching it on their personal screens and not on a big screen. And they also show um, Stinton for the first time. I wasn't really feeling it. I feel like it doesn't fulfill his character. I didn't see, like, a malicious aura around him. He's money-hungry. I really didn't see that. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't really feeling him at that time. 
Um, so next we have Gina and Mark. They come up. They're creepy as I don't know what. Um, honestly, it, it's like, uh, can you not? Um, they they do a lot of the things that um are in the later part of the movie, which is with uh two other characters. Um, Josiah and Denise, Dennis, 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 um, with those two characters, they actually bring a lot of their conversation into this conversation in the movie. Um, so they do the whole, you're an enigma, we don't know much about you, Meg, oh, you like kayaking, I like kayaking, all that stuff, and they also do her, um, getting information, so importing all of her old stuff into the, um, circle cloud, giving her all her new stuff, da 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 Um, they didn't give her her phone, though, because they actually did that during the tour, which is different. Um, so, they talk about how mandatory stuff isn't really mandatory but you really should go and the way they portray that is very creepy and I actually like it because it does give me a flashback to reading the parts with Josiah and um Dennis like just that whole okay um I don't know about this anymore type of feeling um so they I think they did a good job at that and the fact that they didn't have the later scene, and the fact that they put a lot of those aspects into this scene with Gina and Mark is pretty good. Um, so then, May, May's actually shown to FaceTime her parents a lot, which is much more than probably shown her actually going to that house. Which is good um, to me for the movie because it shows that she cares more in my um, personal feeling. Um, uh, man, May with the chandelier um, was crazy. I it it was confusing. To see their dynamic, because it was so concrete that May didn't like Mercer, and Mercer was just trying to be helpful in the book. So in the movie, it was kind of, May's trying to help, but it just comes off wrong. You know, Mercer's trying to be mad, but at the same time, he's trying to be considerate. So it's it's a weird difference from the, the book, definitely. Um... The nurse, then we have the nurse scene, which is crazy. Um, it's actually not Jessica. Is it was in the book, but Dr. Villa Lobos. I'm just gonna call her Dr. V. There's no sexy nurse vibes there. There's no uh all the stuff. She's just, she's just a nurse. She's a nurse, plain and simple. So we have this scene, and he's there. Um, which is funny, because I always thought of Annie as a funny character. So, May drinks the, um, she has the band put on her, her wrist, and she drinks the smoothie, um, to have the server go into her body, and his reaction just cracks me up, because she's like, I knew this was going to happen, but I just wanted to see you go through it, um, so yeah, they quickly do a rundown of the amount of information that, um, is going to the cloud based on what May is doing, I, I said it was pretty much about the same. I want to say impact-wise, it just shows you how much stuff they're actually putting on the cloud, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, also I just put Annie was great in this scene, because it's Annie. <laughs> um, 
So, Stinton is another scene with Stinton. Um, he's just not working for me as a character. He he seems I compared him. I don't I don't know who the actor is. Um, is not an insult towards him, but I just play he seems more like a a penguin falling around Bailey than anything. So it just takes that aura of money hungry person away from him. So um then we get the scene with the senator and also the senators in this scene with Stinton. She's not going well she's I don't call it transparent but it it doesn't have the same impact to me as the book where it's like, oh she's going transparent and they have all these other senators and important people on Capitol Hill only transparent. So it doesn't seem as impactful to me. Um, and it's a common theme in the movie. They do a lot of the same things, but it doesn't just have that same foreboding of the circles, what they take over the world. They're going to be able to see everything and not be able to keep anything a secret anymore. It just doesn't keep that same impact. Um, so then we, we have this small scene. There's a party after it. And there's a small scene where um, we have this character go up to May and talk about the um, the child tracking device. And even though I don't like Francis, I feel like there's so much of a connection to Francis with the child tracking device that this little scene just felt more like a nod than being important at all. So, um, yeah, which I was fine with because, like I said, I don't like Francis as a character, period. I don't think he did anything that forwarded the plot too much. Um, so, yeah. So, later in this scene, we find out the guy that makes me hanging out, oh, snap, it's Ty. You know, they have that full reveal. Um, I put, because they went down into the tunnel, and I and I put this in, and I was like, oh, so everybody's just comfortable showing me every key point in the movie. That's cool. You know, because I feel like at this point, Ty wouldn't think of May as a key person to overthrow the circle yet. I don't, I don't feel it. Not, not yet. So I don't think so. Um, so we have the Ty speech. I didn't, I didn't like it. It felt really dumbed down. It, it didn't feel like it meant anything to me. So, um, very anticlimactic. Um, so Mercer goes, the next thing I want to talk about is that Mercer actually goes to the circle. Mercer never went to the circle in the book. Um, so I think that's new. Um, I think it was a more normalized conversation. You definitely see the misunderstanding there. But just everybody recording their conversation is just really crazy. And just straight up calling Mercer a deer killer just shows how, like, simple-minded people can be. Uh, so. Um... So you see May getting upset with this, um, which, like I said before, I like that there's a more emotional May in this movie, uh, but it does take away from the character in the book. So she she has these emotions going on while she's kayaking, and apparently there's strong waves or there was a storm. It was really hard for me to see that during the movie. Just know she was struggling. And she actually gets caught by sea change cameras. Um, 
which fi- with, like I said, they catch her in the act of going kayaking without anybody's permission or without the owner, without her being there. Um, so immediately when I saw that scene, I was like, okay, this is a great push for her to go transparent because these sea change cameras probably just saved her life. So I was like, that's probably a great push. Um, so Stinton and Bailey have this meeting with her afterwards. They actually, I don't know if they actually share the library. I thought it was just Bailey's library, but apparently they share the library in the movie. Also, we're seeing a lot more Stinton, and it's taken away from him. He, he just seems more like a partner to Bailey than anything. It seems more like Stinton and Bailey versus Ty, instead of Stinton and Bailey and Ty all being out for their own thing. Um, so... May's going transparent. And I like that she does in the movie because it gives her... I feel like there's more reasons for her to go transparent other than Bailey being like, oh, you'll be a good candidate to go um, transparent and stuff. I feel like she has more personal reasons in the movie. Um, So then the next day, we see her actually get up out of bed. (laughs) And one of the craziest things was just seeing the comments. I really think they captured more social media than... The book because the book had like her looking at the comments and actually like reading out the craziest ones I feel like that would have been more um a more better feeling but one of the comments I saw was I like to fart in that bed when May's getting out of the bed and I just I couldn't handle it um so yeah one thing I did see is how they compared being transparent to more like vlogging nowadays. You see a lot of vloggers, a lot of their personal life they put out there. Not as much as probably going transparent, but a lot of the things they do around the house or if they go out, they meet with friends. You get to see it, especially on streaming providers. Um, so I think they really tried to compare it to that. Um... So, so, there was a lot of comments just during when she was going around vlogging. I couldn't pick up on all of them. Um, there was one, um, there was a couple actually after the scene where May is trying to get in contact with her parents and she catches them doing the dirty um, afterwards, so it was a couple, it was like, are you sad or just a robot? Will your ears if you need to be rescued? May's parents are sex positive heroes. And my personal one that came towards the end, eating cheese from last year. That is the internet that I know and love. Um, so the next day. Um, you have the sculpture that was pretty symbolic in the book. They actually take very less time looking at it in the movie. Um, then we have the run, Annie, run scene. Um, and you see it when when she finally catches up with them and they go into the bathroom. You, you can see in here just how tired Annie is. And how she's just like, I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm I'm running around place to place. And all of a sudden, you just get this glow up. All of a sudden, you're just, you're the circle now. In her speech to May. Um, and May actually being more concerned for Annie than just being like, oh, she's just jealous that I'm big now. So, um, it's a better... Um, concept for the movie, but it it just um it takes away from May's transformation because she doesn't have that. Oh, she's just jealous. Thought so. Um, then we have the meeting. 
main, I, I thought it went kind of like the book. I'd say that was one of the closer things in the book with it being acted out. Um, but I also, <laughs> I just kept pointing out to how terrible Annie looks and how she looked in that hoodie. That was just one thing that kept directing me. So, um, yeah. Um, at this point, is it's kind of following the book. Annie is getting more in, I mean, not Annie, but Annie is getting more tired. May is getting more ambitious. Um, May's parents want space. It's following the book. Um, then we get the soul search. And we see that they do something different with soul search. Instead of looking, they do the whole demonstration with finding the criminal, which is actually startling. Um, because they, they find her. The, the lady in like 10 minutes. Um, which I actually put. That would be an amazing show to watch. Just having Soul Search go out and find a bunch of criminals. Let's see how long it takes to find these guys. And just a whole TV show. Like, let's see how many we can find in an hour. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, one thing I did point out is I like how. Ty, Bailey, and Stinton were related to this scene. You had Ty off to the side, kind of looking concerned. Um, Stinton is only concerned when, uh, when it doesn't work immediately, but after it does, he's confident. And then Bailey is just the most confident. He's just like, oh yeah, we got this. Da -da -da. So I like their, um, what they brought to that scene. Um, the whole Mercer scene, that was just crazy. I feel like, it, um, with May's reaction, it did bring it out more. But, um, I, I can't remember if it was that crazy in the book where people were going after him and all this stuff. I, I do remember the drones and the we are your friends part, but it was, it was just like, wow, they really went into his private property and they were really finding this guy. So it was it was very I think that was one of the most impactful um scenes in the whole movie was uh Mercer being chased and then him eventually falling um in his truck. So that was probably yeah, one of the most uh impactful scenes. Um so final twenty minutes you have Bailey and Stanton working together. Like, they are really a uh, tag team duo in this book. Um, sadly, they don't have the whole seahorse, uh, octopus, and shark scene. Um, which was very symbolic in the book. Uh, so they don't have that scene there. Um, they do have... Both of them describing Mercer as a disturbed young man, which is a, a similar thing that they said in the book. Um, one thing I did catch. So, uh, I, one thing I did put was, damn, how quick it took Bailey to start working on a safer truck after uh, Mercer's uh, death. So it was like, wow. Um, how quickly May got to Ty, and just, I feel like how Ty was more of a, a plot device than anything, he didn't really have any impact in this movie, um, which is crazy, because Ty is one of probably the most important characters in the book, so for him to have, like, a decreased, uh, Movie time is is really crazy. <laughs> so, uh, they set them up. All their stuff gets exposed. It, it's kind of like just movie, the heroes win type stuff towards the end. And that really just takes away from, uh, 
from the book is is actually probably as opposite as you can go from the book. Um, which really takes away the final impact of, oh, crap, this circle's about to take over the world. There's about to be sea change cameras everywhere. They're going to know everything, you know. So it does do a, a 180 from that ending. Uh, you know, uh, one thing I did put, though, is at the end... They do have the scene where she's kayaking and they have the drones. So I'm guessing it's kind of like... It's, the transparency is going towards it, but it's probably you know, like, oh, it's going to be safer now. It's not going to be controlled by the circle. Da, 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 da. Or probably it's not going to be controlled by Bailey and Stinton. Probably. So. Um, but yeah, that was... Wow, it's... Me going through the movie. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much my comparison. Like I, like I said, it was, to me, it was a good movie if it was branching off the book. As an adaptation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it did its job because it doesn't bring that impact that the book did. The book really is like, Social media is slowly taking over. We should really be in front of this now. Um, And the movie, it really did just have that, we have to have a happy ending, you know. We can't have that major message. Um, And it does take away a lot of the serious points. But at the same time, for me, it does take away a lot of the filler stuff to me. Um... I'm glad they got rid of a lot of the freaky stuff that happened in the book. Um, there was no love interest, which I thought was pretty cool for the movie. Um, and I actually, I actually put, I, I actually enjoyed the movie more than the book. But like I said, the, the movie doesn't show that, um, the same impact as the book. Um, so, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, um, for what I thought about the movie versus the book, um, is, like I said, I like the movie for the movie, but when comparison to the book, it just doesn't have the same weight and the same impact and message. Um, so, yeah.